Hail and welcome. Richard here with Draz of the Ashen on part 2. Last time we took over Shadowstone Bay and recruited some units. We're going to end the turn and get on our way to start this episode off. Alright, so we got a mission issue to the labors of war. Drazov is angry because he hasn't got enough slaves. Let's read what this says. All life other than that of the Dawisar alone only has value as a resource. A commodity of muscle and sinew to be amassed, exploited, and spent. Even now the need for fresh labor increases with time. The fast industries of your isolated empire ever hungering for more. Labor is received from battles, military convoys, and raiding. When received, it is evenly distributed to every province accepting new labor. Alright, so... Last time we turned this place into an outpost. Uh, outposts are the ones that make us raw materials. And our factories are the ones that make us armaments. So we need more of these. These outposts get more raw materials to get more ornaments to upgrade our units. So let's continue on. So Drezov has just got his new uh, new units into his army. And we have another mission. Gouge the world. Construct a building from the mine chain in an outpost settlement to produce a raw materials. Construct it from the mine chain. Right. The plundered riches of the earth must find their way onto your stockpiles. So to this end, you must drill, dig, and delve deep into the rock and filth in pursuit of the treasures that lie below. No landscape shall be spared. Raw material income is generated by mines and outpost settlements. It's used to generate armaments, treasury income, and for construction of certain buildings and tower factory settlements. So that is in outpost settlements, which is what we just built here. Okay, so yeah, we're getting more raw materials there. So I think we just move on and try to take our next place. It will be the scrap towers. So I'm going to move to the edge of our territory so we can recruit some more units. We'll just be slaves and we don't have enough stuff to upgrade our capacity so let's just get more slaves i'm thinking these guys they're not really there to do the damage remember the orc laborers because they have armor piercing so we'll grab two orc laborers for armor piercing even though their melee attack is so low that it's kind of useless and we'll creep goblin laborers because there's more bodies they might have less health but they have more melee defense so they should be able to survive a tiny bit longer than the laborers the orc laborers. They both have the same stats, they don't have any physical resist or anything, so they're basically the same. So let's end the turn and continue on. Alright, so that mission is complete from that building we built there. That so we got 2,000 treasury and some more labor. Uh, the fruits of labor. The desolation. The desolation of a thousand years of labor already fills your corner of the Darklands, where industry tears at the earth marking the surface with the scars of enterprise. Continue these endeavors and reap the rewards. Workload will, workload will increase in a province each time a mine is constructed. To extract 100% of the raw materials available, labor must be maintained. And we got our technology, so we got plus one control. We're going to need that because we're on legendary difficulty. We got another mission, industry and forgecraft. Construct a building from the assembly line chain to produce armaments. An endless array of armor and weapons must steam forth to provide the dark devices and works of occult engineering that arm the mighty hosts of the Dawisar. It is Hashut's will. Armaments income is generated by assembly line buildings and factory settlements. Armaments are used to improve unit capacity and strength in the Hellforge. Alrighty, so this one here, we need to get it upgraded to get that building. So let's continue on. So these ones, this one requires the raw output, the raw materials, and this one just requires money. So I think we'll just put the money into that, try and get this upgraded, get more raw materials. Our labor force is working at 100% because we have so much. 
So every turn we're going to get 300 ROM hangs and some armament output. Not bad. So we still can't reach the scrap tower. So I think we'll go into... Is there any trees? There is. Let's go into ambush. And go right up against them just in case they have an army there. They do have a camp there. Which is fine because I might take this and go back up. Uh, down here, the haunted fort. Oh, I might actually want to go take the caravan off Blue Roses first because that's a single settlement. Be easier because I'm sure they only have one settlement. Yeah, we're going to attack them next, I think. They do have an army here, so once they recruit, they might come out and get hit by the ambush. Hopefully. We will see. Got some research. Chance of plague. Don't really care about plague. Magic item drop. Capacity. So hero stuff that we can't even get yet because we don't have the buildings. Let's go to industry, I think. We're not trading with anyone, so it's kind of useless right now. And our convoy, we don't have that yet. So let's go to labor quotas. Get more labor. Um, before we head up this way. And military is going to buff our units. Wait a minute. Upkeep for laborers? We have to pay our slaves? I don't think that's how slaves work, but I guess that's just to feed them. It is what it is. Let's end the turn again and continue on. Alright, our mission successful. We have 700 raw materials. So now that we have these raw materials, I'm guessing... Yeah, we want to start upgrading the factory. Get it going. Cost us 500 labor to instantly build it. I uh, don't think it's worth it at the moment. We could take Scrap Tower instantly. It should be an easy battle, but then this army might come around this way. So I'm thinking actually we head back up. We attack this camp and this lord and get rid of all them. If I attack the camp, it's going to be a settlement battle, which isn't going to be very good for our uh, gunpowder units. So I think we're going to go straight into the lord and fight it on the field. Alrighty, this is close victory, medium casualties. Should be an easy enough battle. Let's fight it so we're not losing all our laborers. And let's not do it cinematic. Let's go. Alrighty, let's set up for this battle. We have some really nice terrain here. Any terrain that gives you the high ground is really, really good for uh, shooting units. Uh, the terrain like this should give us perfect line of sight over everything. So we're just going to set up all our goblins. Let's do this. What's our range looking like? Something like that. So push them up a tiny bit. We should be able to fire over these guys, so it should be okay. But our orc laborers here. Orc laborers here. And our chaos dwarf warriors. I think just have them behind and reinforce wherever is needed. Our infernal castle and you can stay up here. You're going to be shooting with the boys. I'm hoping that later on... You level up into something the buffs are here are your shooting units, but I don't, I'm not too sure. I haven't looked at his line yet. And our Kadai Fireborn, they could stay on the flank and use them when needed. Drazo's going to stay right at the front to get this magic missile off and get the enemy to come to us. So let's start. Magic missile, go straight into their lord. Let's see this hit him. Oh, we're on a legendary, so I can't even scroll all the way in. Completely missed. Nice one, Drazov. Let's just fast forward. Get another one of these casts, put it into the Ogre Bulls this time. Yeah, that one did some damage. They're still not coming just yet. Uh, we want to hold this defensive line and make sure that they come to us. I'm just going to keep casting until they come to us. I like that. I like that it turns into a Vortex. Oh, here they come. The reinforcements are coming now. So, what is, wait, maybe move you up a tiny bit more. See, these Brunderbots, they are very short range, but they do do a lot of damage. You want to cast another one of them, let's throw it into the Knobbars this time. Hopefully the AoE should do some damage to them. Oh, hit them in the back. Right here they come. It's our... Our fire glaives have got the better range. So let's set up here and see what happens. The noise of the fire glaive is really 
It's really uh, a nice thing to hear. It's almost like a stormtrooper shooting from Star Wars. Here we go. They're starting to shoot. Oh, it's the castle. Let's get him straight on the Lord. Where are you going? Get back here. There. Yep, so I want you to focus fire on them. Blunder buses. They're nearly in range. Drazzle's right at the front. Fire on these ogre bolts. Everyone go to guard mode. You can get in there. Our slaves are just taking all the damage like they shoot. You can get up there and attack these trappers. They do have anti-large. Oh, they don't have anti-large. That's SFO. So we're just going to push forward and try and get rid of them. That unit's running away. They're taking loads of damage from our blunder buses. That's true. Uh, yeah. Drazolf right there is still just fighting, holding the line. Let's change all our shooters into these knoblars. Try and get them running away. Drazolf, do you have really high missile resistance? 15%. You're not really taking that much damage from friendly fire, which is good. Uh, you guys reform because you're not really shooting that well. Over here, the goblins and their orcs are destroying the Noblars. They've just put a buff on them. Oh no, they haven't. They put a debuff on us. Leadership. Which, that's okay. Alright, our lord should take that. Let's take you guys. Hold your fire for now. You can change on these ogre bulls. You can reform. And yeah, let's just hold your fire for now while they come. You wanna see what happens when we overcast it on the Lord? See if he hits it. Oh, it turns into free. Yeah, it did quite a bit of damage actually. Alright, blunder buses. I want you focus firing here. This side's about to break. That's okay. On these ogre bulls. Rest off you need to hold. These guys, you can move up here and hold this flank. Pull over here. It's all these ogres, they've threaded our orc laborers and our goblins, we don't really care about them, so that's fine. Drazzle's starting to take a bit of damage. So maybe put melee defense reduction on this guy, and we'll focus him. I want to change our shooting into this ogre bull. Uh, let's not waste our shots on the lords anymore, Drazzle should be able to handle that. Uh, okay, that's where you should let's move up. Let's get our goblins moving up. And you can help support there. Get all our shooters to swap over these ogre bulls with jewel weapons. Which are Kadai Fireborn. Let's move over here and try and stop these Noblars from moving up. Lots of shooting, holding the enemy back with our good units. These goblin laborers, they've did well. Let's move up. You can get on the Noblars. Kadai Fireborn into these Noblars. Hold these Noblars back. Drazov is doing well. He's holding the enemy back and doing damage. This side has collapsed. Good. Let's change shooters to these Noblar Trappers. These Blunderbusses. Focus. Focus the Lord. Drazov pull out. All our guys maybe pull out a bit. So our shooters can change fire onto their Lord. Onto here. Reform. Oh, they're running away. Already an easy win. Uh, could I fireborn? You're a fast unit. You can move forward. Goblins. I don't know how fast you are. I don't know if you can catch up to the Noblars. But. Keep firing. Fire on him. Try to get him gone. Keep could I fireborn. Should be doing pretty much everything here. Move forward. Fire glaze. Yeah, I don't want you firing anymore. So we'll turn off fire at will. Could I fireborn get up there? Razo, you can cast your spell on him. Just get up there, try to do as much damage as possible. These guys are too slow, just pull back. So we're just gonna have the Kadai Fireborn doing all the cleanup work. I wonder if the Kadai Fireborn are gonna be our fastest unit. We would like to see something that we can use to chase down enemies. But that should do it. These guys are gonna get off the board before we reach them. So let's just end the battle now. A decisive victory. So a decisive victory, easy enough. Our Gadai Fireborn did lots of damage, and our Blunderbuss is 26k damage, and the Fireglaze with 20k, so they're definitely putting in the work. All our slaves held, well, most of them ran, but they held long enough. 
four hour cast or four years to get up and fill in the line. Drasov took a bit of damage, but that's okay. Let's get more laborers. And the camp is gone. Nice. Let's go into encamp stance, move forward a bit, get a bit of replenishment again. And then next turn we'll take Scrap Tower and destroy this faction. Uh, we can't build anything. Uh, we could rush it, but I don't really want to, so let's just end the turn. Oh no, we got some points. So what spells have we got here? This new spell thing is kind of confusing me. So first thing, I'm going to take Route Marcher for the extra movement. I wonder, do they have upkeep minuses? Uh, upkeep, okay, it's just that one. That one's extra labor. What is dark subject? It's kind of hard to... Yeah, it's kind of hard to see what it is. So dark subjugation, that's one we already have. Curse of a shoot. A direct damage spell. Flames of Asgoff. I think that's going to be a little bit further down the line. The commercial wind. Ash storm is the weakest to fire. Probably not going to use that one a lot. I think we're going to go with curse of a shoot. Although, what is the passive? How do we... There we go. So anytime you cast it does the direct damage around him for 55 meters. That's actually, it's actually a really good passive, actually, so you know what? We'll take that for now, because we're just going to keep using the Burden Wrath. Our cast unleveled up. I can't want to see what you do upgrade. So you get fear, immunity psychology, pretty good. Ammunition, this is all just for yourself. What is this? How how are you meant to? How are you meant to? Uh, oh wait, you just click it and it stays, or maybe not. Uh, augment passive around him, so it buff an R units, and this one gives more ammo. Explosive bullets is that for him? Yeah, I think these are all just buffing himself. Yeah, these are all just buffing himself. So the main thing it looks like is the extra powder. And the restock is pretty good. So let's just put him down this line. That's all we can take anyway. Alright, let's end the turn again. Our military convoys are available. So let's have a look at these and what they do. Mission issues. When it comes to lucrative commodities traded over fast distances, an unprotected consignment is an attack waiting to happen. No chances can be taken for your most important goods. An armed convoy will be necessary. Is this just the caravans? Oh, it is just the caravans. Okay, so let's create a convoy. Uh, what do you have? Most convoy army has additional monster units. I like that. It's got artillery. I think I prefer the monsters if I want to switch you. So we'll take him, hire an ad. Uh, I never really understood how this worked when I played as the. I always forget. I keep what I call them the pawn, but they're not the pawn. They're like the pawn, though. Uh, that's. Send it to Castle Dragonhof. We're going to get a little treasury. Do we lose labor? How does this work? We lose money, we get labor. We lose ornaments, we get treasury. I don't really understand. Um, you know what? We'll go with... We'll go with Castle Drakenhof for now. We'll go for getting money. I want to see if this does waste our ornaments or not. Yeah, it's going to cost us ornaments, so that's how that works. Okay. So, I think then the only actual option is the money ones. So, let's send money for slaves. Let's see. 223... Seven turns. How long is that? Nine turns. I mean, for like ten more dudes, I don't think it's really worth it. 
let's go there let's put a bit more money in it let's put a thousand into it we're gonna get 500 labor back i want some more no i can't upgrade anymore so yeah that'll do uh dispatch him i believe he gets attacked on the route so we will find out later so we got our technology more labor and we have a new mission arcane anvils the greater works of the Hellforge were the designs of your Demon Swift's dark intellect spawn. Is spawn is the bedrock upon which your power is founded. Establish your assembly lines of Hellfire and Blood. The Hellforge is, is accessed via the dedicated button on the main campaign interface. It is split into the Armory tab, which allows the increase of unit capacities, and the Manufacture tab, which could be used to enhance entire categories of units. Which I believe is just this thing. We definitely definitely need a lot more armaments coming in. Uh, we have the raw materials. Is this giving me raw materials? Yeah. And then plus this one. So. I'm kind of tempted to rush that one. But we could put it straight into the, crap, the scrap tower as a factory. So I'm just going to do that. Let's go to the scrap tower and start a battle. I need to decide where to auto-resolve this or not. We're going to take basically no damage. And we're going to lose a goblin unit. But it'll be quite an easy fight. So I think we're just going to auto-resolve it and recruit the goblin. Yeah, basically no damage. Sweet. Let's turn this into a factory. Alright, we got victory over the ogre's trait. And is this faction not destroyed? Yep, faction destroyed. Nice. So, ornaments are sitting at 44. We don't have enough to upgrade anything, so we're just going to get a few more slaves in this army, another goblin, and two more orcs. Uh, that has us the whole province, so let's look at the commandments. I haven't seen the commandments just yet. So, control, income, and armaments output. Recruitment cost and rush labor cost. So that's for building up more. I think we're just going to go with control because we are on legendary. And our control is getting even higher because of our corruption, which is good. So let's start leveling Drazov up a bit more. I think we're going to take Curse of a Shoot now. And you, I think, get more missile strength because I want you to be a lord killer. Just shooting lords down. That is this whole area sorted now. Let's get research, get more for the port because we do have here. Uh, let's end the turn and we're going to head towards the haunted forest next. So Beastman raids in the Scrap Tower. That's okay. We literally just took it. The Hearts of Chaos. Morgur is thinking... Why is my campaign stop for all these goddamn chaos doors and this destroyed our buildings? Well, once them mods are updated, we'll get back to Morgur. Don't you worry, Morgur. Let's head down to the Haunted Forest. Where is the edge of our territory? Rep Tower. Haunted Forest, Haunted Forest. Really should get that mod that increases the... Ooh. Let's straight up declare war on you. I'll run you away. Now Hermogorst has a full stack here, but I think we just get ourselves into the trees. Oh, we're already there, so we might ambush this army that comes out. Destroy this real easy. And then Helmogorst is going to come out. It's going to be quite a big battle. We'll do that cinematically. So let's end the turn again and see what happens with Helmogorst. Actually, I think I'm going to get another Lord. Um, because I do want to get more units, especially if they have another army here. So let's go with... An overseer is our melee unit. This sorcerer prophet is our sorcerer. I normally always go with sorcerers. Uh, Lord of, we have Lord of a Shoot here. Do we get any heroes yet? No, we need buildings. We need a lava field for that. We need the ash level for that one. And our sorcerers are the demon smithy. Okay, dokie. So let's just get a sorcerer. I think we'll go metal. So we can start with the 
we'll cool down those spells. Yeah, we'll take you. You go in there and just get us more. We'll go with more gobos, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll go with more gobos. And we'll go global. We probably won't do the full global. It really depends. But we will just do them there like that, just in case. Uh, so let's end the turn and see if we get the ambush. So we didn't get the ambush. And we're going to get a Pyrrhic victory fighting this on our own. So I think we just got to fight this battle cinematically because it's going to be quite a big battle. Uh, we probably don't even have that much time this episode, but we're going to expand it just for this battle. Let's go, Helmogorsh. Let's fight. Alrighty, guys. Welcome to this huge battle against the undead. We are set up like so. We use this uh, mountain range to block this flank. We have all our slaves just kind of in front of our Chaos Dwarves, so the Chaos Dwarves can do a bit of damage uh, while our slaves are taking most of the damage uh, that they return. We have this orc side of just flanking to hold us back. We're using this hill, we're using the light of sight of the hill to be able to shoot over the enemy. Our castle's here as well. We have our Kadai Fireborn on the flank here, ready to attack the enemy in the back. So at the start of this battle, we can't see any of this uh, because of the line of sight. Uh, so we're just going to fast forward because I just fast forwarded at the start until they came to us. I actually thought they didn't come until the reinforcements arrived, but they started coming right away. So we're just going to fast forward a bit until the first enemies show up. Oh, let's have a look at what they've got. Yeah, they went back to the reinforcement point. Uh, let's come out of this, just have a little look. So, of course, we've got Helmand Gorse here on his giant corpse cart, ready to cast spells, summon zombies, do all that. They have free corpse carts themselves. Lots of zombies, lots of crit ghouls, ready to dish out as much damage as they can. Also have their direwolves here and the bats in the sky. And then over here, they have the reinforcement army, another corpse cart, and their Strigoi Ghoul King hero. Not bad, and of course ourselves, we are just set up like this, all our men ready to defend because we are playing the Chaos Dwarves. They do play quite like normal Dwarves, where you're more focused on defense than offense. So we're going to sit here, and we're going to send Drezov up a bit to try and get his magic missile off to get the enemy to come to us. But it looks like, well, we can't see this whenever I played the battle, but uh, they they seem to be forming up here, ready to come to us anyway. So once I see the enemy with Drazov, I'm going to pull him back. Let's fast forward again. Until the enemy gets a little closer. I think at this point I start seeing the enemy and I'm like, uh-oh, time to go back. Drazov's trying to run away. They have a squad of direwolves that are going to come straight for the Fireborn, actually. Let's have this. Let's have a little look in slow motion for their charge. They're going to charge straight into the Fireborn, and the Fireborn are going to look at them and be like, are you serious? I'm surprised the, the snow hasn't melted here. So here they come in, charge it in. The good eye Fireborn are instantly going to react to this and start fighting back. Look at the little tiny wolves trying to do some damage. And then the good eye Fireborn pick up that axe and say, nope. Let me show you what damage is. Alright, let's go back to this. Yep. Let's start seeing them absolutely destroy these dire wolves. We do have anti-infantry, but I don't think it works on beast units like the Warherds. But it doesn't matter. We have so much damage from the Fireborn that we're going to destroy this unit. Not a problem at all. Over here, the enemy army is still slowly marching towards us. So we're just going to have a more look in at the Kadai Fireborn. Destroy these dire rolls until that happens. There's blood everywhere. One thing I've always wondered is how the undead who have been siphoned, siphoned, siphoned of all their blood have so much blood in the battlefield. Who knows? Anyway, the enemy are setting up to try and do a big flank against us. We're going to get the Kadai Fireborn into Crypt Ghouls over here. Just trying to do a bit of damage before the rest of their army shows up. I'm going to pull that back. So they're flanking on this side. Uh, the enemy doesn't seem to be smart enough to go all the way around this here to flank. So they're going to come up here and push in there. We're just going to hold this 
ground they're instantly gonna cast a spirit leech on drazov doing a bit of damage to him and they're gonna heal that unit with the strogoi lord uh we're gonna cast the curse of a shoot on the list lord i didn't realize he had regeneration so that's basically gonna do absolutely nothing i fire pull them back to our squads and our men are starting to fire. Our fire glaives are firing on the corpse guards, trying to get rid of them. We're right now, they're on crit goals. Drazzle straight into combat with this ghoul king. He's gonna debuff him, and then Helm and Gorse is gonna instantly summon loads of zombies around us, making it hard for us to target their lord individually. The blunderbusses, the castellan, and the infernal glaive guard, they are gonna be just firing. Uh, one thing I did notice in this battle is that line of sight issues are real. Looking straight down, you can kind of see them, but apparently my guys didn't want to shoot. So I'm going to try and rotate, get some shots over there. I brought the orc the orc slaves over here to help deal with these dire wolves, or the dire bats. And our Kadai Fireborn are holding this flank back, one crib goal at a time. There is another, uh, the... Direct damage on this guy, still haven't realized he has regeneration. So, that's kind of a waste of our magic. Our slaves and our Dawisar warriors are fighting, holding the enemy back. While our shooters are basically doing nothing. Our blood are getting a few shots in. But the line of sight issues when it comes to gunpowder units are extremely real. They said they got a lot of fixes for that. But they didn't really, it seems to be only for settlement battles. So back over here, our Kadai Fireborn are just ripping the enemy to shreds throughout the infantry, plus their weapon strength and their ability to not take that much damage. It's doing very, very well here. The enemy's instantly gonna pop something here. What is it? Is that a huge? It's Figure Mortis. That's what this effect is on everyone. These corp carts are just doing so well to hold and heal their units. At this point, the blunderbusses are going to keep... I keep just trying to change targets, but they aren't able to shoot. But we do see that this corpse card is right here, right in the open. So we're just going to absolutely annihilate it with the blunderbusses. And the fire glaives are going to continue firing. We're looking for Helmut Gorse as well. Once he gets back in the range, we're going to keep firing. At this point, Trazov was taking so much damage that uh, I needed to pull him back. This Dragoi Cool King just absolutely annihilated him in melee. And our Kadai Fireborn are taking a bit of damage as well. I brought these slaves here to come around and try and flank the enemy. Alright, our Castellan's moving back, trying to get some shots in. And we're going to drop a King of a shoot on the enemy here. Oh, that, that, that red effect is actually the passability of Drasov spells when he casts. Oh, Helmogorse is about to go down to the Infernal Glaives. The fire glaives. They're gonna keep firing at him until he is gone. There he goes. Bye bye, Helm and Gorsh. At this point, we are completely surrounded. Zombies everywhere. It's not going well. The line of sight problem here is too much that I've grabbed the blunderbusses and I'm sending them around to flank the enemy. I fire them down the side, try to do as much damage to lots of them as they're all blobbed up here. Our chaos warriors are holding the enemy back while our slaves are running away at this point all of them are starting to come up here and congregating on their own i'm gonna do the exact same thing with the fire glaives send them all the way around and get them shooting into this giant blob because the line of sight issue narcadai fireborn are doing all they can to hold these cripples back at this point i got grasgoves into fighting here but i realize he's taking so much damage that i can't do it i need to pull him back and just use him for casting spells this Strigoi Ghoul King is just being an absolute beast, doing lots of damage. He nearly killed Drazov, so it's not looking good. In that regard, the Cast Dwarf Blunderbusses, they are going to set up and start firing now. Straight into the side of all these zombies. At this point, I'm not even targeting good units. I kind of... I was kind of thinking... The Crypt Ghouls, the zombies, the only thing we really need to worry about right now is getting rid of their numbers. So I'm just going to spam straight into all the zombies, try to do as much damage to them as possible. That ma magic missile spell that Drasov has is so good for putting it right in the big giant blob, and that vortex that comes out of it does quite a bit of damage. Our Kaslan here is still shooting when he can back here, and we're going to bring all our slaves back that have routed. 
Look at my Fireborn doing so much damage over here. They're doing so good at holding this whole flank. Basically by themselves. It's just this warrior squad holding the enemy. While the Kadai Fireborn do all the damage. This squad of Chaos Warriors are running away. And the Skrog Gogang is going straight into our Infernal Castle. It's going to roll away. Do we hip shot in him? But it won't be that much. He's going to start meleeing him. But the Skrog Gogang, if he was able to destroy Drazov so much, he should be able to destroy him. At this point, I noticed that he's taking quite a bit of damage. So the Infernal Castle, I'm going to put him in the melee. And then I'm going to drop the Hishut. Uh, what's it called? What's it casts? There it is. The Curse of Hishut, the direct damage onto him. It's still not going to be enough. His regeneration is going to outheal it so much that it's basically wasted mana. Our Fire Glaives here have now set up to start firing into this giant mob. And uh, Drasov's over here just kind of chilling. Our Castlin's taking so much damage. I'm trying to get him out, but he's going to get stuck in between the zombies and this Dragoi Ghoul King. They're just going to keep firing it into these lines and lines of zombies. Our Kadai Fireborn holding the enemy on that side. This side's pretty much held now just by the slaves who routed before. So we're just going to keep firing on the enemy. There is some line of sight issues here. Not all the enemy, or not all our units are firing. So I'm going to move them in a wee bit and get them firing again. There is still two corp carts on the field. So I'm going to drop another curse of a shoot on one of them at some point. I think, oh, no, this is the, the magic missile straight to the enemy. We went a vortex. And we're just going to keep firing on the enemy and hold them back now. That AoE is now gone. So the Gadai Fireborn are going to keep holding the enemy. At this point, the enemy is starting to go into crumbling. Um, not just yet, but the firing over here is doing so well. These blunderbusses are shitting at 358 kills. 400 kills. They are getting so much damage, so much value out of this one unit. I definitely want to get some more blunderbusses. At this point, I set up all our units back here to try and hold the enemy back. Thinking they might push up this way. But instead, they all crumble to the might of the blunderbusses and the Kadai Fireborn, the true MVPs. Look at all the bodies, Crypt Ghouls, Zombies, and some Dalby Sar, and some Slaves, but we don't care about them. It is what it is. Anyway, a good battle, a Pyrrhic victory, took a lot of damage, but it is what it is. Well, it was a Pyrrhic victory indeed, but a victory nonetheless. I've got a lot of guys that have reanimated. Especially this Lord that caused us so much trouble. Him have regeneration did quite a lot for him. Obviously, our Kadai Fireborn were probably... I would say the Kadai Fireborn and the Blunderbusses were both the MVP of that battle without flanking with the Blunderbusses and flanking with the Fireglaives. I don't think we would have won that. All our slaves broke... Uh, they they held long enough for us, but they still broke. And our Chaos Warriors, our two squads, seemed to get destroyed by the Crypt Ghouls. Except for this squad that was on the side flank, and they kind of held the line for us. I think if the Bloodbus didn't do as much damage, 72k, Jesus. He's the MVP, actually, not the Godai Fireborn. Uh, if he didn't do as much damage... I think we would have lost that battle. Drazov did pretty well. He obviously got his ass kicked by Gottfried over here. But at the end of the day, his spells, that AoE that comes from the magic missile is really, really good. Especially for big clumps of enemies like that. And that... <coughs> Sorry. We use that uh, damage dealing spell. Which uh, also did quite a lot to get rid of Helmand Gorsh and some of these corpse carts. They were providing regeneration, I believe, to everyone, so it was, it was a good battle nonetheless. Let's get some more labor, I think. We would take the replenishment, but it's not really giving us that much, so let's just take the labor. That gets rid of both their armies, so next turn we should be able to attack and destroy the haunted forest. Oh, they have a full stack again. Oh, Jesus. Well, anyway, guys, this is going to be the end of this episode. Uh, next time on Drazov the Ashen, we will attack the Haunted Forest and hopefully take it. We might need Hitrus here to bring his army down of goblins, though. Alright, next time. I'll see you then. Peace.